Hi, right, it's Vex, and today we are finally doing our deck tech for our commander, our foil commander deck, Atraxa. That's right, if you have been following this channel and seen my Journey of Bling series, you've known that I've been working on this deck for two years, ever since the original Double Masters came out with Atraxa, and I had this one altered by a Sad Robot Alters, link in the description below. After my two year journey, I finally blinged out the entire deck, have a functional deck and am ready to play and do this deck tech for you today. But before then, let's just see what Trax actually does. If you can read Phyrexian, she does all that stuff. But if you cannot read Phyrexian, I have English versions for everyone. And yes, I did order the secret layer and I will also add this to the collection of Atraxas here today. Atraxas Prayer's Voice. Green, white, blue, black, everything but red. Legendary creature, Angel Horror. So each of the Praetors, except for Urbass, gave their energy to, to attract it to give, you know, turn her to, you know, uh, Frexton. To complete her, I guess. Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, Lifelink, one for each color, of course. At the beginning of your end step, proliferate. Choose any number of permits and or players, then give each another counter of each kind already there. Yes, I had to record that multiple times because I, I couldn't say it right. But anyways, that's what Atraxa does. Super cool, all about proliferating. So our deck is about 1-1 one, one counters and proliferating those 1-1 one, one counters with our Grand Commander Atraxa. Now, before I actually get started in the deck tech, uh, don't forget to have your tokens. There's not a lot of tokens in this deck, you know, some tokens. And the deck list is in the description below, so you can check it out, the deck list. Yes, all my tokens are foil, along with the entire deck is foil. Even my commanders are foil. Usually I go over, you know, the creatures and card types uh, individually. Here we're gonna go over what they do. Remember everything in this deck, not everything, but a lot of things synergize with plus one, plus one counters, right? We're doing a lot of things with plus one, plus one counters. Proliferate helps us increase the plus one, plus one counters for our creatures, most oh yeah, our creatures. Uh, don't forget your dice as well as your tokens because you're gonna need a lot of them. This is definitely a dice full deck. But yes, since proliferate and plus and plus encounters are a theme, we have proliferate cards. Um, actually, we don't have that many proliferate cards. These are it. Five cards plus our commander, six proliferate cards that will increase your plus one plus one encounters. Yes, there are some downfalls of proliferating because if you don't have plus one plus one encounters, you can't increase them. But the goal is these are the ones that will proliferate and some actually give plus one plus one counters and some give minus one minus one counter. Let's go through these real quick here. Tezzeret's Gambit. Of course, everything's in foil and some have the cool Frexian watermark, which I love. And this is cost Frexian mana. So it's three, three uh, mana value, four mana value, but usually costs three, three generic. Draw two cards and proliferate. Easy as pie. Proliferate is very strong too because you know if, if an opponent plays an effect deck, you can proliferate another opponent's in effect counters. So just remember that. Contagion Engine. I believe this is the only minus one, minus one counter theme in the deck. Everything is plus one, plus one counters, but it costs six mana, which is a lot. When Contagion Engine, engine uh, ETBs, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. So you target an opponent and then put all minus one, minus one counters. And if uh, Trax is on the battlefield and a turn she can proliferate minus one minus encounters on your opponent's creatures Then you pay four tap you double proliferate. So it's really cool really good late game engine then you have the uh, two um, uh, War of the spark proliferate. That's when the keyword came back um, Uncommon creatures cost three. This is landfall proliferate. This is when you cast a non-creature spell proliferate roll less Apex Hybrid. This is not the strongest card. I just also want to mention uh, before we get too deep in the deck tech is you know There's lots of plus one plus one counter theme cards. There's lots of proliferate cards It's cool that I you you can customize your deck to your liking so I've essentially customized it to You know the cards that I like It's not necessarily the most powerful card I actually had mana crypt in this deck and I took it out because I'm just like nah, I don't need it I don't need that kind of power level. This is just fun deck. I know Trax is one of the most popular decks and has been really popular for a long time, but you know, it's still a really fun grindy deck. So Rolesque a Apex Hybrid, two green, green, blue, interesting mana cost. 
Legendary creature, human mu mutant. Interesting uh, type line as well. Flying trample. When it enters a battlefield, you may, you may not not you may put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. So this is how you get counters on things to proliferate. And then when it dies, you double proliferate. So with that in mind, that's the end of proliferate. Let's go to the next section. Speaking of extra counters on things, right there, proliferate can do. These grant bonus counters. So essentially you have these uh, creatures here that do um, an extra counter. So if you know when you put four counters on things, you get five. Or you put one, you get two. So usually things only happen one at a time. So it's kind of like almost like doubling right here. These are our true doublers on the bottom row right here that will actually put double amount of counters you, you put on. Let's go here real quick. You know, Conclave Mentor and also Wine and Constrictor, almost the same text. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on a creature you control, that may plus one plus one plus one counters I'll put on a creature instead. Wine and Constrictor does, you know, additional counter uh, with an effect that you control, I believe. Pure Imaginative Rascal, and I do have the partner with Toothy in the deck, so you can do a partner with um, card advantage there. And there's just an extra uh, counter here. And then the most classic doubler is Doubling Season. We'll go right to that one here. You double counters, double tokens. We have, to, you know, of course, we have tokens in the deck, so you can double those tokens. So Doubling Season is not, that token part is not irrelevant, but the counter part is relevant. With reference to attracts, they all just double your, your single counter proliferate. You have Corpse Jack Menace, you know, this is kind of like Conclave Mentor, but it puts this double the plus one plus one counters. So Roll S would put four counters on something. With Corpse Jack Menace, Conclave Mentor would only put three, but you know, it's, you're, you're, still, you're still good. We don't have gigantic creatures here because, you know, they obviously get bigger as time grows. Deep Glow Skate, I love this card. When it ETBs, double number of each kind of counter on any number of target permits. So it's like a hyper proliferate, but it's only a one-time shot. I, I guess I guess it's kind of like a semi-proliferate. Born Clex, Monstrous Raider. Love this little card. This is another uh, another um, Frexen Praetor that you'll see around. Oh. Trample Haste for Green Green. If you would put one or more counters on a permit or player, put twice many of that those counters on that permanent player instead. So essentially doubling season. However, the important part is this bottom part right here, which is hard to read really. If an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent player instead, round it down. So if they were to, technically if they had an attracts and you had Vornclex, their proliferate would do just nothing. Super sweet, uh, just pay attention to that when you play the game. This is a doubler and then it's a haver for your uh, opponents. This category, I have two different categories. You got the movers and the graveyard hate. Movers, essentially you can just move tokens and plus one plus one counters or counters in general around. The Ozlift is one of the most insane token mover around because it essentially holds on to your, um, your tokens. So a creature you control leaves the battlefield. Leaves, even bouncing with Cyclonic Rift. Well, I guess this will leave too, but anyways. If it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozlift. Be in combat on your turn if Ozlev has counters on it. You may move all counters from Ozlev onto a target creature. And yes, the um, double or plus one counters does work with the Ozlev, so that is super sweet. When you move, you're technically just removing from one and putting the same kinds of counters on the Ozlev. Then you have Forgotten Ancient, Rayhan, Last of the Abzan. You just, you know, uh, when this dies, you can move counters on something, or at the beginning of your upkeep, you can move plus one, plus one counters. So you can kind of move counters around, which is super sweet. And then it also, uh, these guys also you know, provide counters themselves. Well, these two, not the Ozlith. Then we have some Graveyard Hate. I snuck that in there. Lion Sash, Scavenging Uji, both almost do the same thing. You know, exile some cards, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Exile some cards, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Super sweet. I just add Soul Guy Lantern to complete the Graveyard Hate package. This is super good. This has nothing to do with plus one plus one counters, but it is a piece of graveyard hate. These are the fat fatties of the deck that you know they can actually get big by themselves without the proliferate or increased counter mechanics. Yes, Forgotten Ancient is back because it not only can it move counters, whenever a player casts a spell, you may put plus one plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. Same deal with Managorja Hydra, Ishai. Managorja Hydra does have trample, so you can get really big because you got players casting spells left and right. Ishai does get really big as well. Ishai and Rayhan can be your secondary commanders. 
if you want to play something other than Atraxa, but of course Atraxa is so beautiful, how can you not play her, right? So these are the growers, right there, and then we just got other fat ones. Versus Gearhawk, I love the frame, it's not the best um, creature of course, but you know, it's a 4-4 four, for four, 5, has trample with ETBs, you should have 4 plus and plus one counters anywhere you want. So you can start the plus one plus one ma counter madness on your creatures and start proliferating them. Colonial and Hydra, ETBs with four counters, and then uh, whenever it attacks, you double those. So that's sweet, it doubles itself. So it's definitely a big beater right there. Plukronos Unchained, I really wanted Plukronos in my deck, so I put it in there. ETBs with six plus one plus one counters. If you escape, 12 plus one plus one counters. Then damage would be dealt to it. Well, it has a plus one plus one counter, prevent the damage, and remove that many plus one plus one counters. So that's sweet. And then fights things, and so you do removal on it. And then, you know, you gotta do some graveyard shenanigans with the escape. Walking Ballista, um, Hanging Back Walker. Here, you know, the XX spells that come into play with uh, X counters. So you pay two, you get one. You know, they don't have to start big because you can always proliferate them up. Um, hang your back wire, you can tap, add, you know, pay one tap, add plus one, plus one counter. When it dies, make some thopters. Walking Ballista, you can pay four, add a counter. Or you can, you know, remove a counter and ping things. And it's very cool, so you can just ping little mana dorks out, get proliferate, keep adding more counters, pay four, add more counters, do some more shenanigans to the deck, add more counters. With doubling season or any doubler, you pay four, you, add, you can add two counters, three counters, you know, craziness. I forgot to mention those doublers do snack, stack, not snack, they don't eat anything, stack. When you have two doublers together, like Vorinclax and Doubling Season, you quadruple, which is super sweet. As I mentioned in the beginning of the deck tech, you know, there's some cards that give uh, plus one, plus one counters away. We have these cards that do give these plus one, plus one counters away and can help you start the proliferating train. Good Fortune Unicorn, I love the name, Good Fortune Unicorn. Where another creature ETBs, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. So that's sweet. That helps you, you know, guarantee counters on every creature after you play Good Fortune Unicorn. Master, Bi Master Biomancer. Each creature you control ETBs with number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to its power and as a mutant. So if Master Biomancer gets bigger, things get, you know, naturally get plus two plus two or two plus one plus one counters. Then if it gets bigger, it gives more plus one plus one counters. So that's super sweet. So these are ETB plus one plus one counters and you have Broker Sensei and Feldar Retreat. This is a new Art Deco card. I love this. You know, beginning of your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. You can stack these two triggers, the, the end of turn triggers, where you do the plus one, plus one counter first, and then you perform the proliferate. So anything that doesn't have one at the beginning, beginning of your end step will not have one due to Broker's Ascendancy. Feldar Retreat, you know, landfall, plus one, plus one counters on everything, they gain vigilance, or make a little cat. Then we have our plus one, plus one counter lords. So if things have plus one, plus one counters, these lords, since you give it, cool benefit. Unblockability right here, uh, trample, and flying. And yes, Tusker, Captain, Absent Falconer can outlast, you know, tap and pay outlast cost and add plus one, plus one counters to themselves. So that's sweet, a lord that actually gives itself lordiness. <laughs> Onto the fun stuff, the card draw, the acceleration, help your decks move. We have some card draw spells that a lot of them deal with plus one, plus one counters, except for Rhystic Study. It's just too good to pass up. I had to include it in the deck. I could have included a plus one, plus one synergy item, but, you know, Rhystic Study looks beautiful, doesn't it? Let's take a quick look. Right there. It's the only one with that art. Okay. Let's start our Fathom Mage. You know, it's got to evolve. When you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, draw a card. So that is super sweet. And then you draw a card, uh, Inspiring Call, draw a card for each creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. But the cool part is those creatures gain Indestructible, so there's a little protection on top. The Great Henge is a very beautiful card in this deck. Um, it taps for mana, you gain life. Then when a non-token ETBs, you draw a card and, and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it helps start that plus one, plus one counter engine. Rishkar's Expertise has nothing to do with plus one, plus one counters, but you are going big. So you draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. And then you play a five mana value card for free. Then we have our cool Esper Sentinel right here. Very good white one drop, but extremely good as it gets bigger because um, it's not pay the one, it's pay the X, where it's, it's X's, uh, Esper Sentinel's power. Usually it's pay the one, but here it's pay the X, which is super good. And sometimes it can, it can never pay two, three, four, no way. So get good card draw there. Then Toothy, 
Pierre's um, partner. We're gonna draw a card, put a counter on it, and then when it leaves the battlefield, draw the card for each plus one plus one counter on it. So extremely good. To fairy master times, not really full card draw card selection because you uh, do some looting here, but it is our only planeswalker, and you can proliferate on top of to fairy, and you can get double season all this stuff. I think doubling season does not double the activated loyalty abilities of Teferi, but Vornclex will. So if you go plus one each turn, because you can do it on everybody's turn, it puts two counters on with Vornclex. So remember that. Super good in that situation. And then, of course, Rhystic Stite, as we mentioned already. Here's the boring stuff, the removal. But look how gorgeous this removal is, right? We have some extended arts. We got some etch foil, some full arts, full arts here, some... Um, you know, semi-full art printing, uh, art deco printing, and you know, full art. But anyways, besides enjoying our cool spells, we this is the removal suite. And if you guys are, have keen eye, you notice the Assassin's Trophy has been already upgraded from my fourth Journey of Bling video. I've upgraded it already, believe it or not. But that will be another video with the tracks updates. We have single targeted removal, the best of the best. Swords of Plowshares, extremely efficient. Assassin's Trophy, target, destroy target permanent, extremely efficient. These two, destroy target non-land permanent. Um, this one exiles actually, which is extremely good. Void run can't be countered, but it does cost three different colors of mana. And green is not one of them, so it's, it's not the easiest thing to cast, but it's there. We have mass removal, cyclonic rift, dam. I love the flexibility because this could be a Wrath of God or a single target removal spell. Toxic Deluge, farewell. Just staples of the format, extremely good. Love this graveyard hate there too. We have some gorgeous utility cards. Demonic Tutor Extended Art. I'm very surprised they didn't put this in uh, Double Masters with the full art, but they're waiting. Tri quadruple 6x Masters gonna have it. Teferi's Protection, got uh, protect your uh, board whenever you can. They have Eerie Ultimatum, so you return any number of permanent cards with different names, which in Commander is all the permanent cards. Uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield, so you can even return your fetch lands. Uh, so this is just in case you do get board wiped and you don't have Teferi's Protection, you got Eerie Ultimatum. It does cost seven mana of specific colors. Battle get Recovery, my green ultra staple. Just a very good card. It's just an uncommon, so no special treatment for that one. But the cool part it is foil on both sides. So gorgeous. Here's the ramp package, and if yes, if you notice, this has also been upgraded to a etched foil from a regular foil. I do have the full art board list, but that's one of their deck. Stay tuned for that one. Um, so our ramp package is very really interesting because we have standard ramp right here, far seek three visits, economics reach, cultivate. Let's actually look at these pictures here. It just looks gorgeous. We have these because the picture looks gorgeous. Otherwise, I'd probably include a different kind of ramp. But you know, sometimes you gotta have something gorgeous. These pictures, because I love the art, far seek and three visits, they're very good. Uh, soul ring, smothering tithe good ramp, but these four ramp are the one that synergizes with the tracks of the most. We have our artifact ramp, which I rarely play in a green deck, but because of synergy, I do play. Astral Cornucopia, ETBs with X charge counters, so you can proliferate those charge counters. Add, um, choose a color, add a man of that color, equal to number of charge counters, so that's good. Um, Everflowing Chastis is kind of like that, except for it adds colorless, and it has multi-kicker two. So you can always proliferate and get more and more mana, this one's probably better because it generates colored mana, but Everflowing Chalice is still good. Then we have two creatures that deal with plus one plus one counters. Riskar, Pem, Pema Renegade. ETBs put two plus one plus one counters on up to two target, or a plus one plus one counter on up to two target creatures. And though they become mana dork. So essentially, all our creatures probably have a chance to become mana dork with Riskar out on the battlefield. So that's really cool. You can put, you can put one on itself, so you can make, make itself a mana dork. They have Incubation Druid. Uh, it's got adapt, 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 adapt three. So you put three counters on it. So it naturally has a way to put counters on it. Then you know add one mana of any type that land you could produce. If you if Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. Which is super cool. Now remember, there's a special caveat with Incubation Druid. If it already has a plus one plus one counter on it, you cannot um, adapt. So be careful with that. Usually I summarize the land package, but you know, they're so beautiful, I had to just show them off. We have a command tower from Commander's Arsenal coming out in 2012. Um, super beautiful. I think it's the only time that that command tower was ever printed. 
Exotic Orchard from uh, Conflux, I believe, and Mana Confluence from Zendikar uh, Expedition, the original Expedition. So they're just gorgeous looking foils. Then we have our Triomes or you know Headquarters Towers uh, for the four colors, for the four Triomes that we, we have in our deck. Let's just take a quick look there. And you know what? Instead of cutting the camera like I usually do, I'm just gonna put these away here and just slowly, you know, put these on the battlefield. Uh, we have our Fetchland from Zendikar uh, Rising Expedition, our second version here. So you can look how gorgeous they look. So all the legal Fetchlands. Well, I guess all ten are legal, but you know we don't care about fetching red, so we don't include red ones because they just look aesthetically non-pleasing in, in our deck. We have other Fetchlands like Prismatic Vista, Evolving Wild. Um, I know Evolving Wild is nothing compared to the um, the beauty that I mean that the power that is these fetch lands here, but it is a Bob Ross land and that's definitely being included in the deck. Again, this deck is about art and my love of art and synergy with the tracks, of course, but the art is so beautiful, I, I have to include it. Then we have our shock lands. And I love I love the Zendikar ones, but the shock lands with the uh, watermark, I love the Ravnica watermark, I just love it. So I have the six shock lands here, one for each color pair with the watermark, along with Karn's Bastion with another watermark here. Add colorless or tap four proliferate. So very on theme. Then another utility land. Let's actually clear these off here. These are our color lands. Right there, we'll actually clear this off. Karn's Bastion and our utility lands section. We'll just grab our utility right there. Karn's Bastion have Gabby Township. I know it's hard to see, but you know, two green, white tap, add a plus one, plus one counter, each creature you control. Or Add colorless, so utility lands good there. We have our usual utility lands, Vesuba, Thespian Stage, you know, copy things. Copy Gabby Township, copy a fetch land, copy whatever you want. It's beautiful. Baseju, who endures the full art one. That looks gorgeous as well. Yavamaya, to make all things green. Remember, decks are usually green because of the ramp, it's usually green. They have Bajuka Bog. They have this is the only foil they have, and I'm waiting for them to print a different foil. So, but that's what we have, Bajuka Bog, right there. So those are our utility lands. Then we just have uh, the basic lands, which I'll show you here. We have an extra snow-covered forest, uh, Bob Ross Forest, another Bob Ross Forest. We have Bob Ross Island, Bob Ross Island, Bob Ross Swamp, Swamp, and two Bob Ross Plains, right there. So that is the deck tech. It's all about plus one, plus one synergies. Uh, I know attracts can be taken many different ways, minus one, minus one. I, I had Toxo on the list of things, but you know, I just want to stick with my um, my theme. You could do uh, Planeswalkers, Super Friends, all these neat shenanigans, charge counters, etc. Anything dealing with counters, you can do. I used to have a Super Friends deck, but you know, my um, playgroup figured out how to kill me quickly because they would just always attack all my Planeswalkers. And I didn't want to play Boardwalk Tri- I'm not Board- Board Wipe Tribal which would be super annoying to anybody playing against the deck because stuff gets board wiped constantly. So I didn't. I took that deck apart. This is the new uh, improved Atraxa deck. I also have Atraxa Infect. Infect's another way that you can do with it. Atraxa, Atraxa Energy deck. Again, anything to do with the counters, maybe new attacks that attracts a ticket deck when Unfinity comes out. That'd be kind of interesting. But anyways, I'm gonna do some gold fishing, shuffle this deck up. It's very big because it's double sleeved. It's got this, um, big container here. This is a 133 container. The regular one is this size, 100. So you see, you see how big it is right there in comparison. That's because my um, my extra thick sleeves I have right here, inner sleeves, make it super huge. Anyways, I have the deck list in the description below if you want to check it out. If you enjoyed this video so far, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos and also add a comment in the description below and tell you tell me how much you love this deck along with clicking that beautiful beautiful tcg player affiliate link help support the channel help me with my foil addiction all right i want to shuffle this deck up and we'll be right back all right we are back and i forgot to mention i have swapped these to the uh, dragon shield matte sleeves which i'll put a link in the description okay i don't know why i put that down these are our seven cards let's start the game this deck is a very grindy deck, so no need to go fast. There is no crazy turn where you combo off. You just sit there, 
end at the end of your turn grind value and that's how you win all right let's see what we got we got some ramp here ramp ish this is slow ramp lands the etb tapped these two definitely need to be tapped yes i know evolving wild is not great for the deck but you know it's in there because it's gorgeous bob ross art can't deny that we do not have any green so that's what our evolving wilds will get um okay let's see what we do this is a great hand it's slow that's what you know that's what we signed up for that spin stage that's a not a green land again so we'll just play evolving wilds we'll crack our evolving wilds find a nice bob ross forest of course right there that's what bob ross evolving wilds is for bob ross forest Yep, no forest. Okay, keep searching. Have you ever, you know, shuffled your hand back into your deck before? Because it looks like this is our hand, this is our deck. And it, we could have accidentally shuffled our hand right into our deck, but I've never actually done it before. But I wonder if anybody has. Look at Bob Ross Forest. It's gorgeous, right? Okay. Anyways, we get to shuffle our Jimongous deck. I don't know why I play fetch lands in this deck because it's super big. Done shuffling this Jimongous deck. Comes into play tapped, of course. Turn two. Okay, I love getting mystery cards. Another foil card, surprise, surprise, evolution sage. Not bad. Okay, so what, what, what can we do? We can uh, play Everflowing Chalice this turn with our untapped Thespian stage or Godless Shrine. Uh, I think we want colors to start casting with Traxa, so it's shocking. Um, Godless Shrine, because this already makes it colorless, so it doesn't help it cast a Traxa. We'll play our Everflowing Chalice. Kicked once, one counter there, and then we'll pass the turn. So what we do is play Evolution Sage with our mana we have now, play a land, get landfall, proliferate our Everflowing Chalice. So start the shenanigans, super sweet. Turn three, we ramp on turn two, exactly what we want to do. Turn three, there's our green land, another green land. So we have choices here. We have four mana, we cannot play a Traxa because this is a uh, colorless. We have Broker Sensei, it doesn't do anything because they're not creatures. So I think Evolution Sage, as I mentioned before, is the best bet. We'll tap this, Evolution Sage right here. And then Landfall Proliferate, we'll play our tap land, Rafine's Tower. Right there, we'll proliferate our Everflowing Chalice. Engine starting. We'll pass the turn. We'll um, go to turn four. So now we have a dude that we can use Brokers of Sensei on, or we can cast a track, so that'd be super cool here too. Toothy, imaginary friend. There, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter. When it leaves, draw that many cards. Okay, so now we have a question. Do we cast our commander? Um, how much is a Great Henge here? Uh, great Henge costs a lot, so Colonial Hydra. Do we cast that? Start getting counters. Brokers Ascendancy. Two these. See how much mana we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. Um, if we do landfall, we have six. So we have six mana this turn. Um, seven, actually, because with the land. So let's do that first. Let's do the landfall shenanigans. Um, if we want to cast Colonial Hydra, we need double green. So we'll just shock in our breeding pool. We'll proliferate here. Now we have seven mana. That's insanely good nowadays. Seven mana. So what can we do for seven? We can play these. Let's do that. Let's play these. Do we have no colors for this? I don't think we have. We do have double blue. Perfect. Okay. So we'll cast these three and a blue. Right there. For our toothy. And then we will tap this for blue, um, green, white and blue i know mana is uh the colors of mana is very important in this deck actually so we have a pseudo proliferate here broker ascendancy so now we get counters in here they play attraction next turn do do fun shenanigans okay bring your end step but plus and plus encounter each creature you control and loyalty counter on each planeswalker do not have planeswalkers so have creatures here boom so now we are set up we'll untap here turn five so get the wheels in motion Put Pelucranos Unchained. Okay. What can we do? We can play our land and then landfall proliferate here. But let's uh let's actually consider our options carefully here. Um hmm. 
we have Plugnos. So how much mana we have, right? If we play our land, we have four, five, this nine. We have nine mana to play with. So we can we cannot, we don't have enough pips, that's the problem. We don't have green pips because we don't have like a Yavamai or another green land. We'll just get green pips by playing the Great Henge. This is four power, so essentially this reduces it by um, uh, four, so it's three green green. We'll just do this, three green green. Right there, before we play our Thrustman stage, we'll play the Great Henge here. And then we'll cast Plukonos Unchained right there. And then it comes in with six counters. All right, we'll tap this, tap the Great Henge, gain our two life, have the green, black available to us, put six counters on here, and then we'll play our Thespian stage, proliferating. Couldn't cast a command yet because we didn't have enough colors, but we still have the uh, evolution stage with proliferating here with our landfall. Then at, at ETB, Broker's Ascendancy comes into play. Boom, so now we're doing the thing. It's not bad, we'll take it. Okay, we'll pass. Turn six here, now we have tons of mana. Oh, we forgot to draw a card with a plus one, plus one counter on our Plugas Unchained, so let's uh, go back and fix that missed trigger that we had. Now we draw a regular card, this is a card we drew. Draw a regular card, Spars Headquarters. Okay, so now, now we're set, we're set to cast Atraxa. First thing we wanna do is cast our Beast of Commander Atraxa. Green, blue, white, black. Atraxa. Prayer's voice here. Boom, boom, boom. And Atraxa does get the plus one, plus one counter from Great Hinge. And you do get a draw card, which is super sweet. Void Ren, you destroy things. This ETB into play. Let's see here. I think it's time to play a Clonian Hydra. All right? Oh, we need two double green. We do have double green, sweet. We'll ETB this, proliferate. I love proliferating, don't you? You get all these counters. This guy is huge. You could fight things eventually. Draw cards. Boom. Okay. We'll play our cloning Hydra here. We'll tap this. We'll have one floating, two floating actually. Um, play our cloning Hydra. There. ETBs with four counters on it. Except for uh, the Great Henge gives an additional counter. Right there, draw a card for the Great Henge. Battle get recovery, that's sweet. So we got some good graveyard shenanigans going on here. Then we use the two extra mana here. That's been stage. Copy the greenest of green lands since we were having issues with our green pips. However, if you look at Eerie Ultimatum, you need a um, black mana. So we're gonna copy the black mana producer here. Uh, Rafine's Tower, right there. So that's gonna copy Rafine's Tower. There, uh, we don't have anything else to play. We tapped all our mana. End of turn, we're gonna stack our triggers. Broker Ascendancy goes first, then Atraxas Proliferate. It doesn't matter because everything has counters on it, so we gotta put plus one, plus one counter here, plus one counter here, plus one counter here, plus one counter here, and then we're gonna proliferate more counters. As you can see, the dice get out of control with this, uh, this guy here. So you see 12, 12 here, or seven. If you attack a Colonial Hydra, you make tons more counters. Atraxa is lifelink, vigilance, death touch, and flying. You can attack here, this gives you more things. This gives you lots of cards to draw. You need more land drops, uh, battle get recovery, void red to get rid of things. Um, Plutonos can you know do some fighting, so that's pretty cool. Toothy, you know, Plutonos can fight Toothy and you can draw tons of cards if you really wanted to do that. And as, as you can see, you know, you get some cool things like um, Everfloating Chalice, Astro Cornucopia, proliferate, generate tons of mana this way. Get some big creatures like your um, Evolution Sage is now a 9 8. Here we have 7 7, 12 12. Trax is now 7 7, can deal commander damage. Clonian Hydro is a 7. When you attack, uh, it will go up to 14. Super sweet. And this is even like without our doublers, so I love this deck. This deck is. Foil, let's look, let's look at our next, let's peek. You know, bam, island, it's not as good. Remember, you can always do this combo. Kill your own dude, draw tons of cards. Wine Constrictor, I can draw cards from the Great Henge. More lands, Flux Channeler, get some more proliferating. Oh, Tethered Scam, it's super good. 
your soul ring s percent this is, looks to be s percent no with broker sensi and uh, traxa very good i just love looking at the cards incubation druid i just love it look at these oh doubling season that looks sweet too cyclonic rift Magor Tiger. Anyways, that's enough messing around. Look at Rhystic Study too. Okay, that's enough. If you want to look at this deck and my journey, you can check out my Journey of Bling series, which I have a link in the description below. You want to see the deck list, I also have the link in the description below, along with my TCG Player affiliate link and all the other cool socials and whatever else I do. But before we leave, I want to remind you to give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos in the future. Add a comment below and tell, much, tell me how much you love this foil deck and how beautiful it is. And as always, have a wonderful day.